Hi there, and welcome back to another CT Yankee Jr. video. In this video, we're going to be putting together a 1942 Model 41 Silver King. Here we are loading it on the trailer last summer. Bill Copeland was the guy that owned it previously. He owned quite a few Silver King tractors and he started narrowing down his collection. As you can see, the tractor is missing quite a few parts. Luckily, along with this purchase, I had a few parts to make the tractor complete. Yeah. Austin. Don't throw your back out now. No, no. Try that. There you go. Leverage. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> You're what? Leverage. Take me it. Go ahead. Okay, let's turn the front wheel. Okay. Wheel? Yeah. It's stuck somewhere. It's stuck it right there. Yeah, perfect. You're on top of it now. On both on sides. That side. Yeah, you're just starting up with yeah, this. Yeah, go ahead. Perfect. Here we are in our old workspace, mixing up some paint for the rims. If you're wondering what brand of paint we decided to go with, well, it's your generic tractor supply paint. We've had good luck with it, and we have to be on a budget. But if you haven't seen, the tractor supply paint really does come out nice. So it's just perfect for this job.
So here we got a 1942 Model 41 Silver Cane tractor. Just brought it into the shop here. We're going to do a uh, quick get going of this unit. The serial number on this tractor is 5365, which puts it 1942 and they only made about 300 tractors that year. Uh, it was during the time of the war, so the previous year, that year, and the year, little, little bit of the years beyond that, they only made a couple hundred tractors. They only made 8,700 total tractors across all models, so it's a very uh, rare and, and unique set of tractors. Start doing some a little bit of disassembly. Got some good news here. So, if you look in here, these are brand new valves, valve springs. If you look up in there, they're fresh valves. So, this engine was rebuilt and basically never run. So, uh, hoping it's going to be an easy get going. And, uh, you know, one day I'm hoping to get this thing restored. But um, at the moment, we're going to count it as a mechanical restoration. Get it going, running at the farm. Have it along the, uh, the line up there. Got the brakes apart here. The material's in good shape, but the overall roundness of the band it, it should be adjusted some it's kinked in a few places I've got the starter and uh, everything we're missing the carburetor a brand new magneto rebuilt all new shoes all the way around this thing's gonna be a beast I've got some work to do on the uh, steering. I had a little bit of a head start. I made up the steering wheel already. It's got the bushing in the center to the correct taper of the shaft. Uh, as you can see, the, the steering shaft is a little out of round, so we'll get that concentric with the, uh, the gear the worm drive at the, at the end and uh, we'll get as close as we can and then uh, put the round uh, tubing that goes up and the bushing that holds it in the center and uh, it'll be all set. In regards to the transmission, take this plate off here, it seriously looks like it has just been gone through. The gear is all clean there's no rust on it whatsoever even the the housing is all clean the clutch works tried that put it in gear it shifts perfect the detents are in good shape haven't tried the radiator yet hoses definitely need to be replaced or hard and cracked and uh, I think the next step for me is I'm gonna take the oil pan off make sure Nice and clean there, put some brand new oil in, uh, and then start installing the last little components to get it running. This one is different from all the other ones. It's got a Continental F-162 engine in it compared to the Hercules models. So I believe it's a couple extra horsepower, and especially being a fresh rebuild engine from whenever when, it's never been run since it was rebuilt. There's no carbon whatsoever. It's gonna be a, a, a beaut running for sure. I took a couple pictures of what it looked like when I took the oil pan off the engine. If I recall, there was not even a plug in the bottom of the pan. So when I took it off, there was just a little bit of sludge, but other than that, it was very clean. There was a little bit of scaly surface rust on the connecting rods themselves and the pickup tube for the oil pump, but 
I'll do another oil change shortly after some runtime. That should take care of that. Just got the uh, engine pretty much prepped to start our first run here. New Magneto. Got brand new Magneto, hooked up the oil lines, we got the oil filter plumbed in, and uh, took off the oil pan, cleaned that out, put some fresh oil in, and we had a carburetor all set to go ready for this thing, and uh, we'll see if it starts easy. So I got crank start here. It does have electric start, but starter we're gonna clean up before we actually go and test it. So we're just gonna crank start it today for its first run. Turn the gas on. Yep. Uh, I smell fuel. I smell gas and. Oh, we got spark. That was right on that <laughs> cylinder. <laughs> Try a starter. If it's right though, it should start up. Right I'll give it a little throttle. I think that's what it needed. Try the starter, even though I said we weren't going to do it. to advance it.
<laughs> yeah, a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> didn't want to, it was stubborn. It didn't want to start. There was definitely a valve stuck. A couple. Number what? One and four? Yeah, at first it was one, and then I think it. Number one. And number four. four got stuck after doing some cranks. But it seemed like it, all the valves started working. Try cranking it now. I just, I <laughs> Hard to train. From then on, after getting it running, we started working on the things we needed to do in order to get it driving again. I cleaned out the steering box, put some new ball bearings in it, straightened out the shaft, loaded it with some new grease, and sealed it with a brand new gasket. This tractor was also missing quite a few things that I did have but weren't in great shape, so we made brand new ones like the platform. For some reason someone had cut a huge section out of the platform so we had to get some new diamond plate and cut it to length. I also had to make some bushings on a lathe for the platform. They act as a shoulder so when the platform bolts up to it it strengthens and it keeps it rigid. I have a live rear power takeoff from a track that's very similar to this one and I wanted to put it in this one. But in order to make that happen, I had to do some machining work. Originally, from the factory, the shaft would be sealed by a felt seal that was pushed against a taper. I didn't like that design, and I saw that it leaked pretty bad throughout the years, so I wanted to improve it. New newer technology like lip seals are much better for this type of application. So what I did was I put the rear cover in the bridge port and I used a CNC control to circle interpolate the hole of the opening in the cover for the seal be pressed into. And then on the shaft itself, I turned it to a straight shaft rather than the taper. And guess what? No leaks. And basically everything else that was missing, we had to make. See that battery box? We made it. See all those linkages? Yeah, we made those too. We even made a new brake band out of an old cleat track crawler. We even went as far as cutting open the gas tank with a plasma cutter to clean out the rust on the inside. Yes, we tried the old stone and rock method, nuts and bolts, and tying it to a tractor wheel and spinning it. Nothing seemed to work. We even used rust converter. Yeah, it's a good thing we cut that thing open. We just wanted to get it done. <laughs>